Welcome everyone to the Co-Creators Convergence Thursday night conversation. I'm Noelle Marshall and I'm here with my beloved Bob Warner. Hi everyone, welcome in whatever time you are in tonight or sometime in the future when you're playing this on our archives. So together we call ourselves Life Partners and we are stewards of the Barbara Marks Hubbard Group Co-Creators Convergence. So we have wonderful guests tonight. Kathy Mason has brought us yet another wonderful guest, Joan of Angels. She does have a last name, but I'm not even going to refer to it right now uh, because we're just having the angel presence tonight. You'll learn all about her coming up. So just stand by. I'm going to play a little bit of video to tell people about, uh, about the co-creators convergence and our upcoming calls. And some of you may not know that we've also started a first Saturday at noon call once a month for Saturday at noon. And that is so that some of our friends in Europe and South America um, or, or South Africa can join us. And so that was uh, a brainchild of Tex Albert and he brings us wonderful guests. So you'll see that in this little video clip that's coming up. So stand by. And thank you all for joining. And uh, I'm gonna start out with gratitude for Kathy Mason, who just, you know, she's a dear friend. She's uh, a CCCer. We call ourselves through and through. And uh, she uh, also hosts a uh, a show on Facebook called Conscious Business Zone every Tuesday and Thursday. And uh, I pluck some of her most amazing guests to join us on Thursday night conversations. So that's part of my secret. So, uh, Kathy, uh, one of your guests, we actually had Joan of Angels as part of World Unity Week. She was really? on a panel of um, angelic uh, inspiration. So, Kathy, I'm going to turn the talking stick over to you to do our centering, bring in the Akashic Records, bring in the, the, the guides and masters, and then you may introduce Joan of Angels. Before I do that, I just want to say, everyone, please stay muted. Keep your video off. But please use the chat to put your comments and questions. And then after Joan delivers her message and her downloads for us, I understand that her crown chakra is all warmed up for us. Uh, and we all have our crowns on. It's going to be a fun evening. That's what we like. And uh, if you've ever been to a CCC gathering, uh, it's a lot of fun and uh, a lot of deep experiences as well. So uh, when Joan invites us in, then we will have everyone uh, there. Uh, if you do happen to be next to your, uh, your phone or some other gadget and you want to share this uh, live stream to other places, you can pick it up on the Co-Creators Convergence Facebook page and just be generous, share. So thank you everyone for coming tonight. And Kathy, over to you. Oh, well, I am so excited to introduce all of you to Joan of Angels, and it's the perfect topic for her to teach us how to step into the miraculous, because she has already done that. 
So she's a great trailblazer to show us how to do it. And she continues to go deeper and deeper and deeper with it. So I am, I know I'm gonna learn and have some fun. And we, we did the crowns because we really wanted to give you all the royal treatment tonight. <laughs> so um, what I'm gonna do is I uh, read a opening that is a um, access to the, the Akashic records. And it's a prayer that I was given after I completed a class with Darlis Mays, who's also a CCCer. I met her on at CCC. And this actually, Jones experienced this. I used this prayer and it does open up the portals to the divine. So, um, so I'll start with that. So here we go. So this prayer is just to get us all centered and all um, capable of get, enjoying the energy that Joan is a portal for. <clears throat> so here we go. We align with our divine primordial blueprint with guidance from the galactic Akashic records in all dimensions. All aspects of self are here now. All universal and celestial information and all important memories for our highest good and guidance are available to us now. We have access to all stellar wisdom of light now, delivered by the galactic Akashic record keepers in reverence for the well being of all life. And so it is. Do it twice more. We align with our divine primordial blueprint with guidance from the galactic Akashic records in all dimensions. All aspects of self are here now. All universal and celestial information and all important memories for our highest good and guidance are available to us now. We have access to all stellar wisdom of light now delivered by the galactic Akashic record keepers in reverence for the well-being of all life. And so it is. One more time. <sighs> we align with our divine primordial blueprint with guidance from the galactic Akashic records in all dimensions. All aspects of self are here now. All universal and celestial information and all important memories for our highest good and guidance are available to us now. We have access to all stellar wisdom of light now, delivered by the galactic Akashic record keepers in reverence for the well being of all life. And so it is. Okay. Masters, teachers, and guides, please show us what we need to know. Okay, we're in. So um, just so you all know, we'll get you out before, by the end of this, <laughs> but we're in. So Joan, I'm so excited you're here and I'm so excited. I feel like playtime and Victoria's here too and Pamela's here. So, so this, is, uh, this is very similar to what we did with World Unity Week, only you're totally on the hot seat. <laughs> I love the hot seat. <laughs> I know, I know. So, so okay, so Joan, if you could start telling us about how you stepped into the miraculous and when, where you went from Clark Kent, my, my old mannered Clark Kent to <laughs> where you are. Whoa, what wild. <laughs> Mild manner, Joan of Angels, right? To where I am now. That that's a great way to frame the question. And so, first of all, I actually want to start in the time and place that we are. And I'm so honored to be on the co-creators convergence because as you were calling in the prayer, Kathy, I was kind of tuning into how powerful that is. Co-creators convergence that each of us are part of creating this new world, this new life, this new miraculous way of being. And it invites each and every one of us listening or being a part of this to be our best self. And you know, you said start with how you became or, or stepped into the miraculous. Well, honestly, 
It is just that it is becoming a co-creator with the planet, a co-creator with source, a co-creator with each and every one of us to create the world that we we want, the world that we know we could have, the one that's right there at our fingertips, you know, the one that we we live and breathe for. And those of us who have been service to others have been living on the edge of this. And so co-creators and that we're converging together for some reason, I don't know, it's like I'm hearing it anew. Maybe it's the crown that's opening up my my connection to source, but but there's something about us all coming together on that miracle path together on that miracle pathway. So that's how I want, and I'm so honored to be here. I can't even tell you 2022 it is, first of all, it's a six year, which is personal responsibility and global responsibility. And it is the time of actually claiming our power and who we are and why we're here. And it is the year we came here for. There's no other year that is more important than this year, except for all the years we had to learn to be the one that's going to enter 2022, if all of that makes sense. So I, you know, I lost everything in 1998. I'm going to really start there. I was a very successful chiropractor. I had a, a huge practice. I had many patients. I spoke around the world, really, on health and wellness coming from within. And my whole practice was all about teaching people how to turn on their power. But I also, and so that's what I did. You'd come in for care with me, and I was all over how we can turn on your power so you could do your work here, so you could do what you came here to do. Not just sleep through it, by the way, but you could be totally present on fire and passionate about your life. And so that has always been my life mission, always. And, and so I begin there because that gave me that knowingness of knowing who I am. And I, at that time, I went to a, a visioning workshop. And in that visioning workshop, we did a guided meditation and I got to see why I was here. And I was shown a vision of being a very amazingly gorgeous goddess angel. I was on the front of stage at the Colosseum pretty big place, right? And there were millions of people walking in front of me. They were crawling, they were in wheelchairs and they were on crutches. And they were walking in front of me, gliding and crawling. This amazingly tall goddess angelic being behind me. And together we were just like, sorry, it was my left hand. I have to really be accurate. With our left hand, we were kind of guiding them through. And before you know it, they were dropping their crutches and being healed. And it was through this vision that I knew that my destiny was really to heal and inspire millions of people. And that I was to do that by reminding them of the power that they had within them, the, the ability that they had. And that is what I called the miracle, by the way, because the miracle or a miracle for me is in that process of remembering who we are, why we're here, and allowing that to bubble through us so that that which we're here to do kind of matches us and we can really call forth our destiny. So I had this amazing practice. I was completely aligned to this concept of healing and inspiring every soul that walked in my practice. But I will say this, at the same time, I had a human self. And my human self was a mouse, okay? My human self would sit in my office every morning and call in the masters to, to work through me so that I could do the healing work that I did. But I didn't always remember to call in that in all aspects of my life. And that I find that kind of interesting because Victoria and I were discussing really calling in your guidance for everything you do in every way your every thought action so i did it in my office but i didn't do it in the rest of my life and so my life went i had a fear that i would lose everything i was very shy 
So even though I knew I was here to heal and serve many people, I was extremely shy about it. And so I kind of cloistered and, and, and looked to find help. So in the end, my fear of losing everything and my fear that somehow I wouldn't be able to manifest it caused me to lose everything. That and some bad choices, bad relationship. And so I lost everything. And we're talking about half a million dollars right there, my home, my car, and my practice. And my kids and I found ourselves with whatever we could pack in my car and running down to my sisters. So we were basically without a home. And this was 1998, very frightening. And at the same time, that same voice ran through me of healing and inspiring. And I knew, of course, that masterminding work. So on one hand, I had nothing. And on the other hand, I had a wealth of this power that had run through me, but which I also had thrown away out of fear. So, so it started very, very innocently. I sat down with my kids every night and soon we were holding hands and we were calling in the light. I had no idea my kids knew how to chant. We started chanting. And so I started using those tools that I knew of masterminding again. And so these are the only people I knew to mastermind, my 10-year-old daughter, my eight-year-old son. So we started visualizing and calling in the power of visualization to create what we wanted. And so, I, of course, we wanted recovery. Let's put it that way. My daughter became the vice president, wouldn't let her be the president. She became the vice president and the secretary because her handwriting was the best, okay? She's 10 years old. My son was in charge of the Department of Activity and Recreation, okay, where we would physically manifest. And every night we would hold hands and we would start to chant and we would start to visualize what we wanted. Now we had no money, we had nothing except enough, I guess, to get to my sisters. That's all I could tell you. And so every night we're chanting, every night we're visually visualizing what we want. And one night my daughter says to me, mom, when we recover, because kids know they're going to recover. They believe in, they believed in me, even when I had lost my belief. So they said to me, mom, when we recover, can we go around the world helping other families so that their children do not have to suffer like we've been suffering? Because it was a real hardship on the kids. Let's just say we went homeless first in the Land Rover, and then that deteriorated. Okay, so we did this every night. And one night, I came home, I was trying to start another chiropractic practice in Southern Cal, I was really discouraged, didn't know what to do. And I came home to my sisters and there was the Wall Street Journal. And it was opened up to an article that kind of talked about the condition I was in, something that happened to someone else. And before you know it, our lives changed. That article appeared as a way shower and my kids and I went on to win a major lawsuit against a major insurance company several years later, in which suddenly I had become a millionaire. Okay, I was given a check for $3.7 million. I almost never tell people. But at the same time, the day I received that check, I completed my book called The Miracle Makers Club, which detailed how my kids and I went from losing everything to believing so strongly in the power of miracles to change our life that our chanting, our toning, our prayers, our meditations resulted in us actually achieving everything on that list. So my kids got that pool house in, in Marin County with the swimming pool and the basketball court. So we were the family with the bat, you know, we were the cool kids, the cool family. We received enough to launch our, our new life, our beautiful house. I started to travel around the world talking to people about the Miracle Makers Club. And so what is a miracle? Because you see, we believe so strongly that we can do it. And, and we did everything step by step and what I now call the miracle path so that we could shift our vibration to call the miraculous to us or to step into it for our life. So what does it really take 
to walk this miracle path or to step into the miraculous? Well, number one, it's an attitude of gratitude. Literally, I can kiss the, the ground under my feet every day that I'm actually upright, that I can live in Desert Heart Springs where I do, that I paint angels, and that I'm so attuned to these energies that I do ask them 24 seven to support me in everything I do now. So what is a miracle? We're gonna break the word down and we're gonna go from there, all right? Because the miracle is manifesting in this life the dreams, the visions, the goals, the intentions that you set in motion, not just this lifetime, but many lifetimes. It's the sole reason or one of the sole reasons that you came here, This that you came here to be here now in these years that are calling for the best of yourselves, for the co-creators to converge, to come together, to raise your frequency, so that we can collectively converge to do what we came here to do. Does that make sense? I hope so. Because let's start and break it down. What is a miracle? So when we break it down, M-I-R-A-C-L-E, a miracle is M is for manifestation. Manifesting the dreams, the intentions, the visions, the wisdom, everything you know. Okay, so taking what was in here, or that vision that I had when I was 30 that I was here to heal and inspire. And I am still working on that vision, guys, I am still setting that into reality. And when I believe that I can do it, then I can call in everything I need to do this. So what is the I? Well, the I is you're manifesting your intentions. And that's an interesting word, ten, tensions, but intentions, what is it that you're focused on? What is your mission? What is your purpose? What are you here to do? And that's kind of very, very interesting because on a side note, and I'll tell you this later, I actually have launched a new class that's going to be live. And I'm excited to do a live class February 19th called Manifest Your Dreams into Reality. And so it's the beginning of the miracle is when we start to manifest it. So miracle is manifesting your intentions into reality. Now, where do they come from? They come from a higher dimensional frequency that you've been given, you've, you've downloaded, that you, you wake up to, that you have a sense of, a, a knowingness of why you're here. So when you begin to wake up to it and you get activated, and I'm sharing with you all the kind of tools of what it takes to walk the miracle path. But when we activate this, when we activate your memory, when we activate your DNA, when we wake you up, and that wake up process depends on what activation points you've had set up. We're all in that activation time now because we're very very busy each and every one of us of breaking free of the controls that have been put on us that are requiring us to step into our own initiation and reveal the truth for each and every one of us so we are being activated now to what your purpose is what your mission is what your intention is so you could set it in motion so that this thing called miracles this miraculous can start to be a wave or a whoosh of positive energies across the planet so we have m-i-r-a and then we have c we activate our creative our intentions that are creative we activate those intentions that are loving so we can raise those E is for energy. So manifest intentional reality, activated, creative, loving energies, higher frequency, higher frequency vibration. When you practice stepping into the miraculous, and you know, it's kind of funny, you could see it as a curtain, okay? You can see that you're here, and on the other side is where you want to be. And 
sometimes it feels a little stuck here, but that's where you want to be. And so the portal is merely opening up the cur curtains. And by the way, everything I'm telling you about breaking down M-I-R-A-C-L-E has is it, the exact kinds of tools that we did. So what happens when you do that? Okay. Well, what happens when you do that is that you begin because you've raised your frequency and your vibration higher to the level of attracting positive things to you as opposed to negative. So now you're attracting confidence, courage, coincidences that are synchronicities. So what you're calling is calling you. What you're calling for out in the universe, like we needed miracles, it was calling us. And in fact, that case that I, I was involved in changed case law around the country and positively impacted hundreds of thousands of people around the country. I know that for a fact. I have gone through when people hear my maiden name, Joan Hangarter, or, or the name that I was using, Joan Hangarter, H-A-N-G-A-R-T-E-R, -E you'll find that I'm actually very renowned for that lawsuit, which actually helped hundreds of thousands of disabled people who were disabled on the job get their benefits. So without even knowing it, the beginning of that vision occurred that my work actually healed and inspired and uplifted hundreds of thousands of disabled people to get their insurance and medical and life living benefits. And I didn't even quite realize that guys until I'm sharing it to you tonight. Okay, because Kathy so lovingly asked me how I stepped into the miraculous. And I'm realizing that that at that time, that that particular lawsuit and winning that launched and started the fulfillment of that of that vision, but not enough for me. I'm going for the millions. And so what happened is that despite the fact that this work inspired and healed, we wanted more. And back in 2013, when I asked Spirit to give me more, to show me more of what I was to do, I was told on Halloween Eve 2013 that I was to paint 33 angels in 30 days. So one of the things I learned is that when you ask spirit for guidance, you know, we're not in charge of the answers that we receive. Let's put it that way. The answers we, we receive may or may not look like what you're expecting. So I, on my hands and knees, were begging for miracles to be shown the way. And I heard a voice that said, paint 33 angels in 30 days. Well, I thought that was a little bit too much work, guys. I mean, really? <laughs> I have to do something? You know, you're not just going to give it to me? And so, and it's a lot of work. I was oil painting at that time, and 33, 33 angels in 30 days was a lot of messy oil canvases. And so I put up a fuss and a muss, and I kept hearing that, again, they'd say, paint 33 angels in 30 days. And I said, well, I can't do eyes. So see, my human self had an excuse. I can't do eyes, I can't do faces, paint 33 angels in 30 days. And it got to the point that I just said yes. And when I said yes, then I, I realized that I was being given a gift of being open to Oh, the rest of my life, okay? That saying yes. Now, first of all, I was told later that they uh, that that call went out to thousands of people, not just me. But I said yes, so only a handful said yes. Because again, to be one of the chosen ones, we must choose. And so I clearly chose. I also discovered that time, that month, that the guides, my guides, are very... You know, they wanted to make sure that I was listening because many times they had told me what to do or, you know, given me that download, but I ignored their messages. So with me and with many of my clients, I find this is true with many clients, that they have a sense they're supposed to do something, but because it's 
a feeling or a gut reaction or kind of a sense or a rep repetitive voice in their head, but it's not in the New York Times, okay? It's not in the headline. They don't believe it until they have a reading with me and I confirm it for them. And I confirm it usually not by their asking, but I usually tell them that, that oh yeah, I see you're supposed to do A, B, C, and D. And they went, really? I was worried, wondering if I should do that. And so those confirmations from spirit are very important. And so my guide said to me, I said, well, what am I going to do with 33 canvases, all these angels? I don't know what to do with them. And they said, the next thing they said to me, well, first they said to me, well, they gave me the sense that I wouldn't know a thing until I completed the task. Okay, complete the task. And I'm kind of get an impulse to hang them up. So I hang them up. And lo and behold, I, I discovered that my name, Joan Hangarter, Garter, Hang, if you break it down, H-A-N-G hyphen A-R-T-E-R -E meant hang art, if you drop the E-R. So there I was hanging art, all these angels in the room, in the portal, I lived in a, in a penthouse, I was in the loft. And suddenly, 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 a book falls off my shelf there and it says your call for angelic assistance has been heard. Okay, so I got that confirmation. And then they gave me the next thing. I guess shortly after, because now I, it's like, well, what am I supposed to do with all this art? And, you know, and I didn't even like the art. The art was embarrassing to me. It didn't, it didn't look like polished, you know, it didn't look like the masters. It was awkward, those eyes which didn't look good to me before, still didn't look good, you know? So I was embarrassed of that which was channeling through me, even, even though I knew it was channeled and I had my eyes closed. So they said, paint us and we will come. And I went, who will come? And that was it, paint us and we will come. And I began to paint. And then I began to paint and paint and paint and paint. So that was basically my introduction to upping the game of stepping into the miraculous because now the an the angelic ones began to talk to me in more ways they began to show me that number one i had learned to paint i don't know if i ever learned to paint i channeled my art and that that i was to do this as a paintbrush so they gave me my next message paintbrush so that humans could see the angels and feel safe and comfortable and so they could have these angels in their room or in their home to shift their energy and bring them wisdom. And that was really my, my beginning journey into really truly knowing who I am because I had been a bit confused. So as this process happened, I was given the name of Joan of Angels. And even that embarrassed me, Kathy, speaking to you directly. It was like, oh my God, Joan of Angels, how do I introduce myself as Joan of Angels? And I'll never forget a day I was shopping with my daughter in a, we were in a women's clothing store on the mall in Santa Monica. And, and I was told, you know, I didn't know who I was by that point. And I introduced myself and gave them my card as Joan of Angels. But I'm like stuttering and my daughter gets, she goes like this. She's not very subtle. She said, do you, did you have to, introduce, did you have to introduce them? Why did you have to lead with Joan of Angels? So I became that person that like some people are embarrassed about, you know, or, you know, I became that, that one who, who began to channel angels, see the departed loved ones and know who they are. And that, and that allowed me to begin after a long process to come into this body of work as Joan of Angels. And so as Joan of Angels, I have learned that I am really here, that even that title is to help me get out of my shyness of being in the closet and giving me a sense of my own leadership and power and, and, and commitment. And I share this because guys, it's so, you know, it's one thing to have your dreams and visions and it's another thing to really have the confidence and courage to, you know, throw off your cloak of invisibility and to put those big headlines, Joan of Angels, and to stand up there and say, yes, I'm Joan of Angels. 
And so two years ago, almost two years ago, a year and a half ago, I, I fell back into some of my 3D doubt and worry. And then, and then I got two messages. This is what they said to me. Number one, you, you know, you are the only Joan of Angels right now. There's Joan of Arc, there's Mother Joan of Angels, there's Mother Joan of Arc, but there ain't no Joan of Angels. So they said, not only, you know, are you the only one, but you could lose that if you don't use it. And that's true. We've been given very, very special gifts. So when we forget to ask spirit for help, when we forget to like wear our crown, like Kathy suggested we do it, when we forget to live in the miraculous and we fall back into our human 3D life, it becomes more mundane. But when we step in the miraculous and we play, then that which we are comes to us. We, we create the world with our new intentions. So Kathy, that was the shortest answer I could give you. Oh, that was perfect. <laughs> and, I, and I'm so glad that you explained the trepidation you had about claiming any of it, because I think that anyone that's that sees more than the 3D land, <laughs> you and I are very similar like that, where it's like, what do we claim? I remember the first time I was on a, a radio show and I actually explained what I did and I got off the phone and I went, oh my God, I told them. And, and I don't know if anyone heard that radio show, but <laughs> I know exactly what that's like. I think so many gifted people, um, that's part of stepping into the miraculous is stepping into your divine gift. It, it truly is, Kathy. And, and, and the only way we can do that is to really go deep inside. And, you know, this is the kind of work I call it soul awakening, soul mastery. We go deep inside and we begin to reclaim those parts of ourselves that we had to cover over. Because if I, at five years old, had said, hi, guys, you know, in the future, I'm going to be Joan of Angels. In fact, you might as well start calling me that now. You know, it wouldn't have quite worked. And so there's a time and a place, but our whole life, my whole lifetime has been about learning who I am and being becoming strong enough to claim it. And a year and a half ago, really, they chastised me. And yet, guys, the it's the same that's true for many of you, not the ones who are the who are the leaders and your teachers, because those of us doing it are learning. You know, we're, we're stating our intention to come out. But those of you who are ready, who are listening to us, who are who know you're here for these this time, you are the now more than ever. Every reason that we gave when we signed up and we said, I'm coming to planet Earth, guys. In the year 2022 is my time. Those wings of mine are going to come out. I'm going to know what I'm here to do and I'm going to claim it. That's exactly what you did before you got here. And so soul awakening is remembering <laughs> that whole process of it's remembering and then implementing. Well, it's in joy though, because when you remember that that's the most joyful alignment you can have is you, right. with you with your higher self it absolutely is and so i and i remind myself every day so like when i'll go on my miracle mondays i take the globe often because we and i think we're going to do that today when we finish i'd like to raise what i call the tower of miracle power around the world with all of us so we can actually invoke the miracle power to go around the world and infuse the globe with with miracle seeds. Perfect. Perfect. So Joan, um, the the journey that a lot of people are on right now is they know they're here to do something, but they're not quite sure what it is. So how does your process work to help them identify their gift? Well, that is a great question because identifying the gift sometimes comes from just starting to claim your skills, 
All right. So my process when I work with people is it's important for them to claim it. So I'm not given the names except after a while when we get a sense of what like she who who runs faster than the wind or she who flies higher than the sky. You know, it's like certain names that have come through of qualities of who you are. And, and we get there, we can get there very easily. <clears throat> I am an intuitive, so often it, it really will just come through. But even you can sit down at home right now, listening and start to go, you know, what are the things I've been intuitively drawn to my entire life? Like really the things, the kinds of people I've liked, the kinds of places I enjoy, the, the things that I say, the books I read, like this will tell you, you have all the clues about what you like and what you're attracted to right there. But you also have sometimes that issue of what I, I like to call sort of, it's like a veil of deceit because there's also that veil of what you've learned that everyone expected of you, okay? What you, you layered on top of yourself between you and who you really are. Because let's face it, if it was that easy to remember, we'd come in and we'd already know. Right. right. But many of you have told me that you've always felt there was something different about you. So see, we already are starting. See, we already have a starting point, Kathy. Does that right. make sense to you? Right. right. We have that starting point. You're on this line listening because you know you're there's something unique and special about you. You're just calling it in. Right. Well, but um, one of the things that I uh, I love and I want to acknowledge about you is that for someone who is shy, you you've been very brave to be out there. Well, you you claimed your connection to the angels and you've fortified it. So you didn't you didn't just go, oh, yeah, that that happened once and that's it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what that was, but it happened. Right. <laughs> But no. and you fortified it, and, and that's a great example for all these other people that um, can watch you and go, well, oh, maybe I can do that too. I heard the message, okay, and, and I realized that my plan hadn't been working. All right, so there's a humbleness that I have to admit to. I, I knew that what I was doing, the joy was gone. So clearly, even though I had written a book on miracles and I'd had miracles, winning that lawsuit, everything was a miracle for me, house I lived in, my joy, because again, I stepped into that fear of losing it all, okay, which is a theme, you know, and so there it was right in front of me. So I was motivated and I was humble and I promised that I was going to listen. I had already realized that that I'd come to a new place, which was instead of begging God for a miracle to like, and I expected it to be given to me, like I expected something to show up like a hand, that I was gonna instead be the miracle. And, and I realized that, okay, instead of asking God to, to do something for me, I'm gonna figure out what I could do for God. Or for saw source so the you know i wasn't talking to the angels when the, all that was happening but i was like i'm just going to figure out how to give back okay i whatever i'm doing they're not giving it to me i think i'm going to go back to my old way of being like when i was at practice and doing all that i just used to give so i'm going to do it and that really was the key because then i got out of my own head and i discovered that when i wasn't so busy holding myself back pe people so it, for example I do Miracle Monday and we and Miracle Monday has been growing. I do it on Facebook and I do it on YouTube and it, it actually actually has been growing. And I was talking to a client the other day and she said, Joan, I missed Miracle Monday the other night. I was so upset. I, I thought it was a 10 and it, it mess. Anyway, she was really upset. And I said, well, what is it? I'm constantly wanting to know now. Why do you come to Miracle Monday? What is it about Miracle Monday? And she said to me, and this is what I'm hearing, you create an environment where we feel loved. We actually feel a part of the community. I'm always doing healings. 
we always take our our energy pulse before we get on or when we get on and and everyone leaves that show feeling lifted right and there's a whole tina marie does the whole you know back of the house the comments come up and 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 without me knowing what i'm doing and that's another thing i want you guys to consider you can create and help spread miracles just by showing up just by being you just by believing in your own energy and going i'm going to show up not for me but because they need my energy so i'm going to actually show up as a positive human and and i tell you this because actually now more than ever people need that of you right people need that of us regardless you don't have to know your mission to know that you're here to show up in a positive high vibrational frequency whether you know the exact things your assignment is okay so that's where i'm going to tell you you go out and chop wood carry water show, show up and and do what you do do you we need that and and then your guides will do what they did to me they'll give you the next step that's perfect that's perfect so um the art uh, i haven't gotten to see it in person but i know someone who bought one of your art pieces and it was um josie bought uh angel archangel <laughs> gabriel and she just says so much energy it's like a portal that comes out of it is that the way all of them are well i'm going to give you a secret about josie's art okay so first of all it was because of josie that i moved to the desert <clears throat> and gabriel told me that the day i brought the art out to her <clears throat> that i was to move to the desert so i could hear so and and josie josie james jj her her house is filled with art from me now and she would come over sometimes and interpret the pieces like one of the pieces she said joan do you know that that's where the angels she looked at this piece and it's in her it was in her office but i think it's at home now and her her grandson is enamored she said this piece joan is angels diving in it's when they they've gotten their contract they've gotten their instructions their toolkit and they go through this portal down to the heaven to earth she blew me away but here's a caveat about the art and i invite any of you to reach out to me and and i'll take you on a zoom tour of the art and i'd love to show it to you you can't find it in many places now but if you buy one piece it's because that piece called you right. that piece has your name kathy and your resonance and normally you'll have not one piece by the end you'll have several <laughs> okay um the woman victoria and i are meeting tomorrow has like five or six major pieces wow. they're all portals to another level wow so are you still painting at all well that's an even better question <laughs> and, and it's a better question because i've, I've done it i've been very focused on coming out and not so much as an artist, but coming out as Joan of Angels, coming out with my mission, my purpose to, I've been told I have to help steady the frequency right now. And, and so that's why you see me everywhere now that this is my time. And I take a deep breath and I'm just following this guidance so that I keep moving forward. Right. With that being said, I've done a few smaller pieces, but I just cleaned out the, the studio last weekend. And it's a virgin studio at this moment. And I and I know that the call is now almost cleared and ready for new energies. So it'll happen. But yes, guys, I, this is a sanctuary. There's a tremendous amount of art. In fact, if any of you are own an art gallery, I have solo show, I have two solo shows for sure. <laughs> Fantastic. So Victoria just wrote. There's a painting in Joan's house I've got dibs on. <laughs> oh, and uh, he has the divine heart of Mother Mary. Oh, and Tina Marie says, my picture still talks to me, made oh, by Joan as well. Tina Marie is a collector. And Tina Marie, very gracious. First of all, we have the same birthday. And oh. Tina Marie is the back. The, she has, has helped me in the back of StreamYard. Oh. 
I shouldn't share that because she's really good. I don't know if she's looking for some more StreamYard clients, but she's very, very good. And it's been really fun to have help on that. Oh, OK. So Noelle asked, how old were you when you were crowned Joan of Angels? Holy moly. Do you, do you really want to know that? Life. <laughs> Which life are you talking about? <laughs> I was class. Class. Let's just say this, okay? I, I began my chiropractic practice 42 years ago. You could do the math. <laughs> All right. You could do the math. And, and I, you know, so, so I am in a youngering place in my life and it's true. I look, I look younger all the time. The more I connect to the higher frequencies, the younger I get, the more vitality I have. And I feel like I'm leaping over tall buildings. Perfect. So I wasn't given the name until I was in my sixties, if that helps you. Okay. Yes. I didn't even know that, that, you know, I stepped onto the really the path of writing books about miracles and praying for miracles in my 50s. So it wasn't until then that I shifted from the chiropractic hands on to writing and teaching others. And the teaching, which I love, but which I always had to talk myself into because I wasn't even sure, even though people love my work. You know, I, I've been I've had that. Anyway, that was the past, guys. That well, that, that's that was our conditioning. I mean, we were we were we were of a different era of um, uh, you didn't always claim all your gifts, and you didn't, and you were quietly watching before <laughs> you ever said anything, just to make sure it was safe. <laughs> right, and I still do, but I was trained to never let never beat a guy in tennis. <laughs> right or in any game and i had this programming that i could never be better than the guys and that i always would have to defer to people in power so becoming a doctor so for me another secret and i'll share this with you guys because it is true we all have another name we all have a name from spirit of who we are it, it, the, for all of when I say we all, the many of us who choose to walk this higher path also have a higher dimensional frequency name. And it's not the same as your earth name. And so, and I and I don't even know why I, I said that. I, I had a point, but I missed the point. But but calling in that name, yes, gives you new energy. So when the guides told me a year and a half ago, uh, Joan of Angels, I know you love the name. There were things, you know, there are things that that are part of being Joan of Angels, like there are things that are part of being Kathy Mason that that you're to do and share. Because this is the time. And, you know, in 10 years, I don't want to sit down with my hopefully grandchildren who say, well, what did you do, Grandma, during that, those great days? And I said, well, I hid under the blanket. Right, right. Yeah. I, I was too scared. I, I was afraid I was going to die. And, and so I know that's what we're called. We're called to go, okay, I don't know what's going on, but I know that I can hold light. Well, I think this time has allowed all of us to find each other. So that's been wonderful. Yes. But, um, uh, Noelle put um, about about um, you being 60 when you did that. She says that's inspiring. I'm still in my 60s. OK, and I was reluctant <laughs> to say my age. And so, so guys, I'm going to be 73 come March. It's only a number 73 years young, because the truth is I've been reborn. And I wake up this way a lot every day, just so you know, it's not a new thing. I literally, with the new dawn, I could leap out of bed and I'm like excited. I talk, someone was at my door at seven o'clock this morning because they'd lost their phone and thought I had it. They're at my door and they, they're thinking that I'd be asleep. I was, I was like fully dressed and on because I have that passion, mission and purpose that I teach. And I still turn people's power on just like I did in my chiropractic office. Let's turn on our light because the world needs us to shine it bright. Oh, wonderful. So, so are you, you are shuffling cards, it sounds like. Oh, I, I, yeah. Did you want to do anything with that? 
Well, you know, I think I might. I think okay. I might. I'm going to show my miracle cards, actually, since since I have them in my hand. And, I, you know, sometimes when I'll do channeled sessions or just talks, I'll pull cards and see what they had to say. Of course, we've had so much to say, I didn't actually need to pull the card. But I'm going to pull from the Miracle Messages deck that was designed by Deborah Garcia from Spirituality Gone Wild. And she took for I took 44 of my paintings and put them on cards. on um, oh. cards. And this one is the angel train station. Victoria, you are in the room facing that angel train station right now, I think. That angel train station is a very powerful piece. Talk about convergence, okay? There's two pieces of convergence. One is the angel runway and the other is the, the, the angel tra train station, okay? So places where people come, we drop our physical body, we take our angelic light frequency and what else happens there? We drop our baggage. So it's the only transportation that you're not allowed to take your luggage with you. So at the door, at the train station, at the runway, we drop our luggage so we can actually move forward fearlessly. And that's when miracles manifest, by the way. They don't manifest when you carry that wheelbarrow in and you say, but oh, by the way, you know, I'm headed, I'm headed, you know, higher, I'm headed to the, the heavenly realms, but the luggage is too important for me. <laughs> it's going to hold me back. So I'm sharing all my little tools. So it says, well, what is the, this card particular says you're on the path to success. Your time is now. And that makes me feel that all of you who are, who are listening to this are waking up to the knowledge that, yeah, okay, I did come here to hold the light. I did come here to, to radiant, to, to do my life. And this is our time. The stars are aligned. All the planets, God, Jupiter, they're just like pushing us forward to do what we came here to do. So don't let anything hold you back. Open up that curtain, call forth your miracle life. And on that note, I want to let everyone know about the class I'm teaching. And I, can I share it? I'm going to share it with people. Sure. Do you want me to share the website? I have it open. Oh, yeah, do it. Except skip. The, so the date is going to be done by tomorrow. <laughs> OK. OK. Well, here we go. OK. Good. So the workshop is February 19th. So um, just see that when you're looking at it. And it's it's one of the first live events I've done in almost two years. So really excited to do it. What is it? The practical guide to manifesting, turning these dreams into reality. In other words, it's waking up to who you are and beginning to see the concrete manifestation of your life becoming that which you know you're here to do. It's so simple. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to live the life you've dreamed about. We're going to learn how to hear your heart singing. Okay. And that's how you're going to know that you're manifesting your dreams and your destiny. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to let go of what no longer serves so we can make room for the new. Very important. We are going to transform your limiting beliefs so that that which you so that you let go of that which stands in your way. We're going to build your confidence. Well, guys, I've had 72 years of practice of learning. Actually, I've always been good at teaching others how to do this, but self-confidence in your own potential. So get this. If you're listening to this now, you are already a miracle maker, okay? You're a winner. You already know how to do it. You are already on your path your spiritual journey so you we're going to just confirm that you are who you think you are so then we create that action pathway and we move forward so please sign up that would be wonderful it just went up last night and i look forward to meeting new people and playing because this manifestation i call it visioning the other word for me is visioning we envision 
our world into reality. So thank you for sharing that. Sure. Sure. So um, are there questions we people did? Oh, and uh, Tina Marie said, Joan's classes are awesome. You've got a big fan. You've got the fans here. <laughs> All of us are your fans. This I feel like awesome. just uh, to me, it's incredible that I, it's just, okay. I really use the words like a miracle that I have fans. Okay. It's a miracle people come to watch Miracle Monday. It is. It's a miracle that you're all listening to me tonight. So I'm very excited about it and well, great. Yeah. I think, well, co creators convergence is a perfect group of people to understand and to benefit from your work because they all come together. Uh, and we used to physically come together once a year and um, co-create in the field, actually you could feel the energy difference in the group where things were dropping in and, and uh, people were pairing up to create new businesses and just genius ideas were coming through. It, it was amazing. And I'm sure that it will be again, but, but it's, the same, it's the same energy that you tap into all the time. That's what, oh, and they call, Barbara Mark Hubbard was the inspiration and she called it the field. So we yes. all tap into the field and see what happened. That's interesting. So that's what Tina is saying, that the classes are, are kind of like, we create that field and we tap in. And I have, I have a unique way of loving on people. And, and I just am very excited when I get to connect in those ways. So, Perfect. you know, Joan means gift of God. God is gracious. And I don't share that lightly, or I don't even share it out of ego. Because when I think of it that way, you know, that, that I am a, a gift and you're a gift. We're all gifts. Like it's kind of, it gives me more of a sense of being present, you know, like, like when I think of royalty and I think of, you know, the king, queen of, uh, over in England, they work really hard. They serve the people, you know, and, and when I think about that and I realize that we have these leadership roles that we can serve. It's not like we did anything special. It's really that we said we want more. We want to help. We want to, you know, so we work hard to serve because we have that need to do that. Right, right. But but I think that uh, so much of this is the courage that originally it's the courage to serve and the courage to be in the truth when there is so much that's contrary to it in your in your environment where you're trying to figure it all out i mean i think you know the 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 to be love mm -hmm. when we were brought up with conditional love right and women you know my generation I, I was the last of the generation that women do not become doctors they marry doctors so <laughs> it was appalling to my family i became dr joan you know i needed that title oh that's i went in that whole discussion on names i needed that title like the title joan of angels so when you find your name it gives you freedom to act in those ways Perfect. but we are all co-creating now Yes. And we all are finding each other. That's the exciting part because then it's playtime. That's <laughs> those crowns. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Noelle, so, so Noelle, do you want to invite people to? Yeah. Anybody okay. wants to uh, turn on your video and uh, join the conversation here, you're more than welcome. Uh, you can put things in the chat and um, Oh, good. And I want people to know I'm going to put my email and my website. So if you want to reach out and uh, check out the art or reach me. I have been coaching. putting your websites in there a couple of times in your. Oh, you did. Okay. Yeah, okay. I did. It's fine. Oh, good. Perfect. It's all good. I love it. I'm having all my needs taken care of tonight. <laughs> Victoria gets to see that painting. I know it's in there. I Victoria. And she's got a painting of, of Sedona over her head. I was just in Sedona. I just came back Tuesday. The painting over her head is the mountains in Sedona, the inner city oh. and the beings that are within the mountains. Oh. Awesome. 
Uh, if anyone has a, a question or comment, just you know, we'll be informal here. Just wave your hand or unmute yourself and begin. Bill, Bill's unmuted. Sounds good, Bill. Yeah, I saw I saw the um, the announcement you had up about the the workshop you're going to do, which said February nine, but you said the nineteen. Yes, because. My web designer, I think he has ADD. Okay, I think he read it backwards. <laughs> I, I love Paul. Okay, but I think he read it backwards because I asked him to put the date up, and it's I, I think it's February nineteenth is the date, and he put February nine. So, but okay. when you scroll down to register, it actually has the correct date. Okay. Okay, and also the emails that will come out will make sure to have the correct date. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Yeah, that was like a shock, but I just decided to go with it anyway. You know, had a full day workshop. Yeah, it's February nineteenth, so so imagine that he just dropped the the one. It's only a physical <laughs> thing. <laughs> okay. Or we could wait for ten days. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, he's not he's not on our fast radar. When you scroll down to the bottom of it, it does give the date on the very bottom of the registration okay. form. So you will know that it's on that date. Okay. I always have a lot of questions, so I'm not going to ask any. Oh, um, come on. <laughs> I don't want other people to chime in here. Are yours. Okay. That's a rare opportunity. So Barb, do I have anything? Okay, I, I'll just comment on um, taking another name because as you can see underneath it, it says Flo Bonamasso. And um, my name is, my given name is Barbara, but you can't say Barbara to me because that's what my mother said when she was angry with me. You know? <laughs> so that's how, and so I was always Barb. Well, when I was little, I was Barbie, but I, I was Barb. And all of a sudden, Barb got really pokey, you know, like a Barb, you know. So I no longer wanted to be Barb, and I couldn't figure out what to be. So at the time, everything was flowing towards me, and I was manifesting, and things just were working out so well. So I thought, well, if I call myself flow, then even if things start not flowing, it will be an affirmation for me to, to look back at. So that's just my story of it. And um, sometimes it works and sometimes I have to use it as an affirmation. <laughs> I get it. I, I get it. Like the name Joan of Angel. So, you know, I have pr procedures where I actually, you know, sort of feel angels in my body just to make sure I'm in that right frequency. I love that name flow. That's great. Anyone else want to? Oh, okay. So oh, great, Pamela. Yes. Hi. Thank you, Joan, for sharing your story. It's so inspiring. And I truly would like to hear you talk a little bit more about how you integrated all of these amazing experiences into your everyday life. Because sometimes it's it's hard to uh, walk between the worlds or, you know, dance between the worlds, so to speak. Well, I will say for so in one sense, I live by myself. So it's easier for me to stay focused on where I'm going. I don't have my kids around. I don't have, you know, partner. I really have me. And so it's taught me a lot of self-awareness and confidence. And, you know, I, I read my cards. I, I sort of meditate. So I have, my life is more and and since the pandemic started, when I almost never leave my house anymore, I live in a sanctuary anyway of art, sacred art, angels everywhere, crystals, etc. So in a sense, the answer to that, Dr. Pamela, is I've created a sanctuary. We can all create our altar and sanctuary. I live inside that sanctuary. Um, I come out when I go out. I protect myself. I you know, really protect myself. I, I, I clean off my org frequency because I know that I don't do so well. You know, the world is an interesting spot. And the more I raise my frequency, the more people see me now. So I, I don't want to walk invisible anymore. You know, I, I want to be visible. I want people to feel the energy, even if they don't know what it is. So I guess 
I'm not even sure what I'm answering anymore. Did that? <laughs> well, I think that's great. And, and um, unfortunately, I have my 90 year old mother with me for six months and, uh, and no breaks or hardly any. And I have a husband with health issues. And so I, I have many things that are, it makes it a little more difficult to do as much as I would like to do in honoring my passion and my purpose, but I'm doing my best. <laughs> and let's address that because you're not the only one who's got all these responsibilities to care for, you know, children or, or spouses or, or parents. And so the most important thing is to go inside and to really like don't even get out of bed until you feel like you can feel your toes your belly button your nose i mean like like in a sense preparing ourselves and strengthening ourselves to do what we're here to do you know because everyone has that emerge but you also i noticed you know with, with your diva within and the goddess within you know about the importance of this as well so whatever we can do to help you, I'd be help, really happy, happy to give you another perspective because so what, what I'm hearing the guides reaffirming is that, well, this lifetime, it looks like you're doing all the heavy lifting, but boy, they did some heavy lifting a few other times. <laughs> like it is a trade-off for us too. We can't walk away from our responsibilities. So it's about managing them, but understanding them maybe from that higher realm too. And, you know, you owe it to yourself to take breaks. You owe it to yourself to have helpers. You owe it to yourself to, you know, get a housekeeper. You, you know, you, the everything that you can give away, you, you owe it to yourself, okay? I definitely have the housekeeper. When my husband proposed, I says, well, what do you expect in a wife? And he says, well, be faithful and, you know, uh, loyal. And I says, no, I just want to make sure you're not going to fire your cleaning service. So <laughs> I have never cleaned the house. I've been married 31 years. Well, I need someone who can cook. My last <laughs> husband was a chef and it, it definitely can spoil you to have, have help in the kitchen like that. Yeah. Good for you. Good. And, and that was your intentions. All right. Yeah. I call that miraculous to tell you the truth. Does he fold your laundry too? <laughs> this is so fun. So Sheila, you're here and Talia's here and David's here. Do any of you want to speak? Yes, I, I have a question. Hi, David. Hi. <laughs> Um, so on the 19th, what time is your, your workshop? What time of the day? Uh, it's at noon Pacific. Noon Pacific. And how long does it go? Two hours. Two hours, okay. And of course, there'll be a replay. You can replay it at any night or day, 24 hours a day, um, if you want. No, it's going to be a fun workshop. I actually, once you get me out there, I'm so happy I'm there. <laughs> Just saying. Looks now, um, any of you in Los Angeles going to Los Angeles Conscious Life Expo at all? Okay. Not this year. Different arena. Yeah. Yeah. So that would be, it would be great to have you there too. At the, at my event. Yes. I just put it up there. I, I mean, I it was supposed to have the right date. I do apologize for that, but you guys are all visionaries. You could see the truth about it. So does anyone else have um, something they want to share? Yeah, I have, I have a personal question. Um, you know, you talk about your children. They, they must have been, what, 10, 8 when you were chanting. And, you know, you know, I'm just thinking about how did they, how did they come to do that? I mean, when I was 10 years old, I was thinking, like, let's go play softball or something. Um, uh, you know, they must be part some angel guides or something. I mean, you know, and do they, you know, have some, th does your daughter have some type of uh, gift? Is she in, in tune with uh, what you're, you're doing? I mean, it's just like, that's a miracle to me that you could, yes. could the, the family did that and brought that in. And I'm so, just wondering how that's going. 
I, you know what? No, that I think that's the most amazing question that anyone has ever asked me. Okay. Um, yes, it is unusual. And they were both into sports, actually, sports and gymnastics and all those other things. So it would have been very unlikely that they knew that. But I brought them up in Marin and Berkeley. And so, oh, and they had gone to Montessori school and they lear had learned how to chant in Montessori school. But they were the ones that really pushed the Miracle Makers Club. They just, we just instinctively did that. And I'm going to tell you a secret, which I didn't realize until tonight. Okay. I have amazing kids. Both my kids are successful and they love, they love their mother. They, we are in frequent communication and they're both very highly successful at what they do. They have great kind of people and work skills. And I have a lot of friends who have kids that don't call them don't want to be with them and they can't and and I had had this crazy life where I lost everything and you know it looked like I was going under so people might not have thought that my kids didn't get turned out as great as they have but they have my daughter though is is in okay my daughter is afraid of her intuition she saw that it took me down a bad path and our life got scary when we lost everything and so she closed off her intuition and now she suffers tremendously because between her logical mind and her and she'll get mad at me i'll say she'll call me for a decision and i'll say well let me pull a card and she'll scream at me she says i need a logical decision now no one comes to me for logical decisions i don't, I don't know why she thinks she's gonna get it so to answer your question, my son's in more of it. He's more out there with his intuition and he, he'll read the cards, but you know, they're into sports. And I, I joined an ashram at 23. Neither of my kids are doing that. Okay. I didn't know what an ashram was when I was 23. Right, right. <laughs> I just, or 43. We're 43. <laughs> So Joan, I'd like to ask a logical question. Uh oh, <laughs> I did. I got, went to chiropractic school, and I graduated with honors from all those that memorization I did. Just so you know, I know how to do that. Ask it. Um, no, no, I. Did, that's a joke. As Kathy knows, um, I've had some pretty incredible inner experiences. And in one of them, um, it was almost too, too much to believe, but this great voice from the heavens shouted down and gave me a name. And I don't know if that's a soul name, um, whether that's an essence name, um, whatever it is, but I've been using my world famous left brain to try to figure out this whole mosaic of things that I've been going through spiritually um, with multiple souls and multiple everythings. So I wonder how you intuitively would respond to the voice shouting from heaven. Well, first of all, when I get shouts from heaven, I'm in total gratitude because a shout from heaven that you can hear is a true miracle voice. OK, you, when you can hear that, and you know, that resonance. Second of all. When it's that voice from heaven, it's only about you stepping into the name. It doesn't matter if it's soul boy and is my soul name, my essence name, whatever it is, it's a name that's been given to you, which is a resonance for you. And if it feels good. And so that's the question. Does it feel resonant for you? It may feel a little bit more powerful than you're used to. I don't know. Um, it's a very, it's a powerful name, a good. very powerful name. Spirit knows more than you do about who you are. And I would be glad to work with you and unravel that for you. But a power name is like Joan of Angels. Joan of Angels, when I step into it, is authority, leadership, showing up. You know, Joan of Angels doesn't have little wings and hides in the closet, right? Neither does that name that you were given. 
that name that you heard is a call to you, to that higher self of you to wake up and to step into it and to claim it. It's a process of claiming that, that place within you that can rise up to that. It's where you can go. Yeah, I, I, I have not been reluctant. Let's put it that way, okay? <laughs> I'm sorry, um, you have not been what? I didn't hear that. Re reluctant. I've not been reluctant to step in to uh, the power, but it it was, I, I must say, uh, many, many things about my life and all of that came together at the, in that moment, mm -hmm. okay? But it was pretty mind-boggling let me put it that way and your human yeah. mind says it's mind-boggling but just Pardon? i said your human mind may see it as mind-boggling but rather than calling it mind-boggling we could say oh my god i had this most awakening moment activating moment and and maybe i'm still processing it but thank you bring me more Thank you, help me step into this energy and help me trust that it's not mind boggling at all, but it's natural. It happens when spirit, when we're ready to claim it, it happened. Hallelujah, let's, like we wanna kiss your feet, kiss the ground that you're walking on that this name came through. So powerful, it's inspiring you to lift up, calling forth your highest self to walk it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's what came through to me. So, so Tex has a question, and he's been okay. so polite. <laughs> I'm so excited. You guys are wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. First, I'd like to thank uh, Joan for being who she is and for having uh, come into her own uh, manifestation through the challenges. I mean, you, I mean, even you know, with your children. I mean, it's quite a story, very inspiring. Secondly, I'd like to thank you for affirming this uh, role that the co-creators convergence has and for this, uh, the stewarding role. In effect, I mean, thank uh, to Noel and Bob for having lived up to that uh, as a, you know, like having known uh, Barbara Mark Sabbard and then uh, uh, for the last eight years, they've been uh, stewarding this and uh, regularly every Thursday having these uh, conversations. So your affirmation of the power of this uh, convergence, not just a convergence for a chat, but a convergence in a spirit of presencing in our co-creative presence because together we are co-creating we have the potential to co-create together so i thank you for affirming that and uh, lastly but not least for having insisted on the uh, the importance of just showing up now i that speaks to me personally because over the last uh, year now I've been more or less uh, just going along, showing up at uh, CCC, uh, showing up at the Deep Time Network, you know? And uh, I mean, uh, this week, uh, maybe it's about 10 days now, I got this very strong uh, uh, insight that uh, through the Deep Time Network, when we're looking at, uh, at the story of the evolving universe since 14 billion years, uh, when it started, where it's going, now with the new uh, James Webb Space Telescope that will be able to give us uh, more insight into the, the origins of, of the universe, or at least its evolution. Uh, I have a sense that we, we can, the science and the, uh, as someone said, the science and the dreaming, we have the potential now to have to truly become the consciousness of the cosmos 
the cosmos may have started by a great consciousness uh, back 14 billion years ago, but we human beings uh, have the potential to be the consciousness. We may be aware of a lot, but uh, we need to consciously come together in uh, collaborative solidarity. And uh, I say collaborative solidarity, I mean love in actions. And when we do that, I think we will be very uh, instrumental in answering even the question that uh, that Noel likes to bring us uh, to us that uh, Barbara Max Abad used to ask, I mean, what's your gift to the shift in humanity? So I'm, I'm, I'm really happy that you've been affirming all that because I take it very significantly for who you are, for who you have been, the road that you've been walking and where you are in life. And that's very significant. So thank you. It touched my heart very deep. Thank you. Thank you, Tex. Beautiful. Oh, perfect. So perfect. Yeah, Barbara's yeah, watching. David wanted to jump in here real quick, and then we probably need to close it. So Actually, I have ahead. something for William Spadey. <laughs> um, William, would you be willing to declare right now your new name? Take it on. Um. I'll tell you the name. Zokar. Can you say I am? I am Zoltar. Again? I am Zoltar. I hold in my hand, in my bosom, <clears throat> um, the power of something called Beleuchtung in German, which is illumination. And that was the seed that unfolded. Thank you. It's a golden laptop to be used in writing the sacred writings, the writings of illumination. Wow. Yeah. That's Very what I powerful. do. Excellent. Feeling it. Yep. It, it took a couple times for me to actually hear it, William, but the last time when you delivered it, I am Zoltar. Mm -hmm. I was going, what's he saying? I'm not quite getting it. <laughs> but you got it there. I felt it. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. I could hear a very deep, resonant voice like coming from the heavens, like I am. I mean, it's like, like <laughs> oh, with incredible symphony music playing in the background. Okay. I love it. This is all correct. In Hollywood would have been envious. You know, I love it. When I when I met my second husband, I heard the Hallelujah chorus, and they were singing like when they really make themselves known to you, you can't miss it. <laughs> so I'm happy to hear it was like that voice from heaven. Yes. David, I'm so happy you asked because I wanted to ask so badly and I didn't. <laughs> and, and now I have tech envy because who wouldn't want a golden illuminated computer? You know? <laughs> That's just. <laughs> oh my. Oh. oh, well, Joan, thank you so, so much. And everyone, thank you for co creating this beautiful evening. And I. As you can see, this is very similar to actually being together, isn't it? Noel, Bob, I mean, uh, yeah. and David, there's so many of us here. Except they were kind of well behaved, you know? Oh yeah, we're in our little <laughs> Hollywood <laughs> squares. <laughs> oh, it's help. <laughs> yeah, well, and you're not in your bathrobe. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell secrets. <laughs> oh, but anyway. Uh, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, Kathy. Well, I just wanted to thank Joan so much, and I hope everyone will get a chance to look at her website and um, and follow her uh, on YouTube and follow her uh, Facebook. You'll be so glad you did. She just does incredible work and interviews amazing beings of light. So um, this is just the beginning of your journey if you're just being introduced to her work and uh, please share that and